I gotta be honest. If Lafleur is looking for peak athleticism, they may want to give me a call. I stood in this heat all day. I didn't cry once. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Lombardi Time Brews. I'm your host, John Delray. Sorry if I'm a little tough to see or anything like that. As you know, I am on location for training camp today. Rather than being in Title Town, I came to a park. I don't even know the name of this park. I, I don't live here. But uh, one of the parks in the shadows of Lambeau on the backside. And so found a little spot here to just talk with you for a little bit about what happened at Packers training camp day two. Yeah, and let me start out by saying it was a scorcher today. The sun was direct. It was hot. And uh, I know, like I saw the talk online about like, it's only 83. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It was toasty. It was a hot 83. Okay. So today I'm going to go through how Jordan Love did. I'm going to go through the injuries. I'm going to go through whether Matt LaFleur said anything notable in his opening press conference. And then I'm going to tackle all of the requests that I've gotten as of late for, uh, for what you have asked me to look for at training camp. So starting off with the injuries, as we know, with Sean Gary, Eric Stokes, they're both on pup, obviously. But a new addition to the injury list would be Dontavian Wicks. Yes, they're, uh, uh, they're day three draft choice wide receiver. Uh, he suffered a concussion yesterday, so he's going to be missing a little bit of time. Uh, in addition to that, we know that Grant DuBose is also still out with his back injury. But the Packers did get some good news. If you'll recall yesterday, Tarvarius Moore, Tariq Carpenter, and Caleb Jones were all placed on the NFI list because they were sick. Uh, all three were back in practice today. So whether it was a stomach bug or something, if they stayed up too late, who knows. But whatever, they were all back today, which was very, very welcome news. The players of the day today, in my opinion, would be Jaden Reed, second round wide receiver out of Michigan State. He had a very good day today, uh, much more exclamatory than yesterday was. Jordan Love was certainly improved over yesterday. Still some ups and downs, but I'm going to give him a player of the day. And then lastly, Jerry Alexander for the second day in a row. Dude was all over. He looks ready to lock some stuff down. So, um, moving on from that, the starting lineup of the day, if you will, yes, the ones, okay? That would be on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, obviously, love at quarterback, Aaron Jones at running back. The wide receivers were Watson and Dobbs with Jaden Reed. Now, I will say Samari Toure was kind of like first one up to get in there for Reed, so uh, those were the three mixed in with the ones most. Tight end of the first one was Musgrave, but DeGuar, I think, was in like snap two. So obviously, DeGuar and Musgrave tops there, depending on what they're calling. Then the offensive line today at left tackle was Yash, Elton Jenkins left guard, Josh Myers center, John Runyon Jr. right guard, and Zach Tom, the first right tackle. I will say David Bakhtiari today was out. He did not practice at all today. It wasn't specifically like injury related. This is part of, I think, of his maintenance plan. What Lafleur did talk about yesterday, the fact that Bakhtiari still still i don't want to say coming back because he's back but it's, it's a maintenance plan that knee injury was so significant it, it was so much more than just a torn acl he also now is aging into his career he's going to be on this maintenance plan for realistically the rest of his career as a lot of older o-linemen are that suffer injuries like this so no David Bakhtiari at all today. What that did was it allowed Zach Tom to stay at right tackle with the ones all day and Yash Nyman at left tackle with the ones all day. In terms of the two's offensive line, because I know there's a conversation about that, that was Caleb Jones, Sean Ryan at left guard, uh, Jake Hansen at center, Newman at right guard, and then Rashid Walker at right tackle. So obviously, Caleb Jones, Rashid Walker, they're the next two tackles up, which just what happened to Luke Tenuda? That's my question, but regardless, he wasn't up with the twos, and uh, interesting. Maybe Jones and, and Walker are officially ahead of him now. Either way, something to watch. Also, quarterback two, more definitively today than yesterday would have been Danny Etling. Yesterday, I felt like it was just a lot of rotating. Today, Etling was most of the time the second one up, and that just leads me to believe, like, QB two uh, for Danny Etling right now. In terms of Matt LaFleur's comments at his opening morning press conference, nothing too huge today to really take from that. Uh, one would be uh, Sean Ryan. Uh, LaFleur talked about how Ryan is in much better shape this year than he was last year. That echoes comments that Ryan made himself yesterday at his locker, saying that he's just much more mature. He doesn't know what he took to get that PE day suspension last year. 
He doesn't, uh, he doesn't totally know what happened his rookie year, but what he does know is that he's more mature this year. He's more ready. Hopefully, a former third-round pick is going to turn this around and become a contributor on this team. The Packers could use, I mean, look, they got Jake Hansen, they got Royce Newman, but like the Packers could use a definitive interior top flight backup with a with a potential future for more. But right now they could use a top flight backup in the interior. And if that can be Ryan, great, great. That means that it's a third round pick not wasted. So certainly hoping that he can indeed turn around, which it sounds like he's on the right track. Also of note, uh, Matt LaFleur talked about like, you know, the first practice yesterday didn't exactly go exemplary for the offense. And there's no excuses for that, whether it's windy, whether it's hot, whatever, no excuses. Uh, and then he also gave compliments to Kraft and Musgrave, the two rookie tight ends, because as LaFleur was leaving a meeting last night, those two were still sitting there working. So uh, be ready for all of the cliches about them being lunch pail kids and, you know, coaches' sons and the whole thing. But those two tight ends seem to fit the bill thus far. Uh, moving on from that, let's just talk Jordan Love. How did he look today? Right? Everyone wants to know. So let's talk about it. I will say, you know, there were ups and downs. Of course there were ups and downs. But beyond that, it is so clear the, the explosiveness that he has in his drill work compared to the other quarterbacks. Now I know. The Packers don't exactly have the most um, the most decorated backup quarterback room, right? With Magoo, Clifford, and, and Entling. But nonetheless, there was one drill in particular, and it was just, it was a rapid fire quarterback drill, right? Get the ball, chuck it up. Get the ball, chuck it up. That kind of thing. And Love, rather effortlessly, was just so explosive in his delivery of the ball. Catch fire. Um, then, and I wanted to pay special attention to this because of a comment that I got yesterday on the, on the video. I really wanted to pay attention to how does Love look compared to the other quarterbacks. Well, as I said, Love was explosive, but then the other ones got up there. And especially in the cases of Clifford and Magoo, it just felt like they were almost in slow motion compared to what I had just watched Love do. And I'm not trying to be you know, over-exaggerating or anything like that. But that's, I mean, that's just the truth. Love was catch fire, catch fire. Uh, Magoo and Clifford, it was much more of a process. Catch, especially Clifford, had a very elongated delivery, which took time. And so in this drill work, it, it's apparent the difference in athleticism and explosion that Love has compared to his backup quarterback. So I wanted to make mention of that. Uh, I also did want to make mention, too, um, his mobility on the whole. I'm going to go through all 15 of his red zone snaps here in a little bit, telling you the results of each snap. His overall mobility, you know, I hate to do this, but it's very reminiscent of young Aaron Rodgers. And I say that, we look, we've all seen it. We all watched Rodgers for years. No one was going to confuse young Aaron Rodgers with Lamar Jackson or Mike Vick, right? Okay. But, Rodgers was an expert at evading and then taking off and was sneaky fast. Love almost says the same thing. And it showed several times today that he evaded pressure and then turned it into a gain, which is something that they have lacked in the red zone for a few years as Rodgers has aged. So that would be a welcome addition to the playbook, especially in the unsteady nature of a young offense. So something to keep in mind there as well. Um, so let's go through this. Uh, also, if you'd like to care about net throwing, they have not yet brought out any of the nets for like the 40-yard deliveries. I don't know if that was just a Rodgers thing or whatever, but they haven't done it in two days. And uh, yeah, I can say at least on the shorter range nets, Love did hit one today while on the run. So take it for what it's worth. Um, in the red zone, here are Love's 15 snaps. I apologize. I'm going to have to look down for a minute so I can read. Um, but... Snap one was love to Jaden Reed, a slant across the middle of the end zone. Touchdown, Packers. Snap two was love throws into traffic. This was a poor decision. Love threw into traffic along the right sideline. It was deflected up. I didn't catch by who, but it was deflected up into the air. Devondre Campbell came down with it for an interception. Snaps one and two were the epitome of an up-and-down young quarterback. Snap three was a sweep pass to Dylan going on the right side. This was either dropped or fumbled by Dylan. Regardless, the uh, the ball hit the ground, depending on which way a ref would have called it. Snap four, love to Dobbs on a fade. 
One of the more curious decisions all day, I would say. So Downs is lined up one-on-one -on -one against Jerry Alexander. And they called a fade for Dobbs. Um, and Love threw it there. <sighs> curious. <laughs> curious choice, to say the least. Alexander smothered Dobbs. The ball was overthrown anyway. Like, that thing wasn't going to be complete even if Dobbs was open because it was overthrown. It didn't matter. Like, Alexander was blanking in on Dobbs. I, whatever. I don't know why they did that. Unless it was just to say, like, hey, let's see what happens. Uh, snap five. Love under pressure. He evades the pressure, but he does overthrow to Musgrave, who is running through the back of the end zone. Just one of those where he... Uh, threw it up for Musgrave to go get us. He was running away, um, but Musgrave just wasn't quite tall enough to get that one. Uh, snap six was a toss to Dylan. That went for a decent gain. Snap seven, love to Watson was a slant, complete, uh, probable touchdown, maybe down at the one, kind of depending on how it would have been called. Snap eight, pocket collapses around love. He took off. This is a decent gain. Uh, not as good as another one, but still, pocket kind of came down around love. He ran up through the middle, gained yardage. Um, snap nine, handoff to Aaron Jones. Jones kind of wiggled his way through traffic as he does. Maybe would have been a touchdown with live tackling. Maybe not. Either way, still a good gain in the red zone. Uh, snap 10, love. One of the more impressive throws of the day. A laser to Christian Watson on an out on the left sideline. Razul Douglas came streaking in. I mean, he read it. He was ready to make a play, but uh, it didn't matter. Love got the ball there quick enough. Razul was close, but mm -mm, that's a touchdown for Christian Watson. That was, that was pretty. Uh, snap 11 was a play action. Someone just didn't block Justin Hollins, or it was a well-called blitz. Regardless, uh, basically, Love went back, did the play action, and then was absorbed by Justin Hollins, like that play was dead on arrival. It wasn't going anywhere. Uh, snap 12, quick out to Goodson. Jair broke that up. Uh, and that was a like, scripted out, like Love didn't really have anywhere else to go. Uh, but Jair just read it like a book and just broke that right up. Uh, snap 13, Love across the middle to Musgrave. Musgrave dropped it. Pass was a little low, but should have been caught. Musgrave with the drop. Snap 14, pocket collapses, and Love scrambles up at least to the two without being touched. This was the more impressive of the scrambles up. Pocket was collapsing around Love. Love ran up through the middle and, and did well running. I mean, he read the field well, got up at least to the two-yard line before it was Devondre Campbell met him there. And then snap 15, Love complete to Musgrave, who was running some kind of out along the goal line. Musgrave with the catch. The offense swears he crossed the plane. The defense swears that he didn't, of course. And uh, there you have it. I do believe the coaches sided with the defense on that one. So getting to your request, uh, you know, I will say this too. Uh, there was one other red zone play I didn't take. Didn't take his copious notes with the later teams uh, in the red zone. Red zone was very obviously the, the emphasis of practice today. Um, so uh, pressure was really strong today. Again, the Packers defense is just swarming. Now that may change a little bit with pads. I will say, recall last year, there was tons of pressure talked about in camp too. But... Yeah, the O-line can block right now, but it's just not the same, <laughs> right, without live tackling, without, like, full pads. So uh, yeah, bear that in mind as you're reading all these reports about pressure. Um, but I will say, too, in one of the later strings, there was one red zone play that was worth mentioning. It was Magoo to Melton. Melton again. Melton, I, I feel like Melton had a really strong day yesterday. Um, and again, slanting middle of the end zone wound up being wide open. Uh, caught the pass from Magoo for a touchdown. So I got to tell you, with Dubose out, and I know I'm going to talk about this a little bit in the request, but with the wide receiver six job so up open, if the Packers opt to keep one and Dubose not yet practicing, I do feel like Melton is making a move for that job. It's so early, so early. Don't overreact, but I, I do feel that way. It's Melton's making his move. All right, let's hit the requests now. Request one, how do those tight ends and rookies looking? Well, you know, Luke Musgrave, um, Musgrave, again today, had a day where blocking was not his strength and it was on display. There was one player in particular pretty early in practice before they were doing red zone reps or anything like that, that uh, it was a handoff. I don't recall if it was to Jones or Dylan, but it was a handoff, and it just got stopped dead in its tracks. And the reason is because Musgrave allowed Preston to get an inside move on him. Um, but, but then you saw it later on in the red zone work where Musgrave got open. So kind of the same tale as yesterday. Um, 
just up and down for Musgrave thus far. Kraft, I can't say, really did anything notable today at all, nor Josiah Deguara. But one thing that I will make note of is Tyler Davis got some run with the ones today. Which I don't know as if anyone really saw coming. So Tyler, Tyler Davis got some reps with J-Love and the rest of the ones, which is curious. Uh, request two, Wooden and Brooks, how they doing? I will tell you, Carl Brooks, you know, I didn't see him make many plays today. Wooden got a lot of reps with the twos. Uh, Brooks was kind of changing around there between twos and threes, but um, Brooks looks lean. And I know I talked about that at the draft, that he was probably going to have to bulk up a little bit because he's coming from collegiate edge to now playing interior defensive line in the NFL. He's probably going to have to bulk up, especially for how the Packers like their IDLs. But the truth is, dude looks lean. Uh, just looking at him next to the other interior defensive lineman, he's skinny. And um, nothing that Wisconsin can't fix, but still, uh, it's noticeable. Um, moving on, Eneg Barre. Eneg Barre, uh, this is worth mentioning. Eneg Barre got a lot of the one snaps today. I talked yesterday about how Wal Allens was the starting edge opposite Preston Smith. Today, it was Kingsley and Agbare, mostly opposite Preston Smith with the ones. Now, he didn't really do anything notable with it, but hey, nonetheless, that in and of itself is notable. Samari Toure got some reps with the ones. Nothing, nothing really happened there. The wide receiver six competition, like I mentioned earlier, Bo Melton, he's, he's beginning to stand out to me. Got that touchdown with Magoo, had a fantastic day yesterday with a lot of catches across the middle. I just feel like in that area of the roster, he's the one who's standing out. Uh, next, uh, the International Pathways player. Uh, oh, I looked up how to say it last night, and I'm totally blanking. I'm so sorry. My brain is fried. It's so dang hot out here. Um, God. Damn, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, the International Pathways player, um, he did not. I'm going to be really honest. It's kind of hard to find him on the field. Like I, I purposefully looked for him for a while today. <laughs> Every time I just looked around, I just couldn't find him. I don't know if he was just in amongst the clumps of people or what, but sorry, just nothing really to report today. Uh, Caleb Jones, how did he look today? I will tell you, in the in the position drills, Caleb Jones, because occasionally with the offensive line, right, like uh, if it's just the O-line working together, they ask the O-lineman to essentially stand a block and then the other O-lineman to essentially act as like the D-lineman, right? Well, Caleb Jones is not a natural born pass rusher, that I can say. But in those individual drills, his power is also incredibly evident. Uh, Cox, the UDFA from Florida, uh, as an edge player, he didn't do a whole lot. Or no live kicking today at all for him, so nothing to report there. Um, and then running back three, Nichols, Goodson, a um, lot of rotation there today. Nichols did have a really nice cutback run. Um, like, really nice. Would have been a nice game for Lou Nichols. Patrick Taylor seemed to have a nice run, too, but I couldn't tell if it was one of those that would have been broken up anyway. Um, and then Goodson did get some work kind of with the higher strings, but wasn't able to turn it into anything today. So that's it. I'll be back Saturday. I'm going to live tweet practice, but you're not going to see a video coming out from me. So the next time you're going to see me is Monday when I'll be putting out a video following training camp, what will be practice number four then. So hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. If you want my reporting on training camp for Saturday, make sure you follow me on Twitter at LTB Packers Pod, and I will fill you in there. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. And as always, go Pack Go.